Chapter 3 The Magnificent, Fantabulously Famous Moon Hare A week went by and PJ Petulant was still determined. She ignored Sandra the dragon and focused single-mindedly on her new goal, the moon hare. She tried everything, all the terrible things that had always worked for her in the past. She cried and she screamed and she pinched and kicked. She held her breath over and over again until she was dizzy. She was definitely giving up on that ploy. In fact, she behaved very badly, but none of it worked. The moon hare stayed where he was. There was nothing that King Winston and Queen Elsie could do. If we could, we would, Petunia dear, said the Queen as she tucked PJ into bed. But we can't give you the moon. What about that goldfish idea, eh? tried King Winston, hopefully. A nice goldfish in a bowl. Great fun they are. PJ rolled over onto her side in the bed. Through the open window she could see the big full moon. I want the moon hair, she said. King Winston and Queen Elsie left the room, turning out the light and wishing PJ sweet dreams as quickly as they could. PJ stayed on her side, staring at the moon. I want the moon hair, she said with a yawn. I want the moon hair, she said as her eyelids drooped. I want the moon hair. Well, you can't have everything that you want, said a voice suddenly from out of nowhere. Although I am rather special, it added. PJ sat bolt upright in her bed. She looked around her room. There was a nightlight plugged into a socket next to her chair and the room looked sleepy and still in the gloom. Slugs, said PJ, using her special nighttime word for when things in her bedroom didn't behave the way that things in her bedroom should. It was a word that made her feel brave on the outside, even if her insides weren't. And then she felt around for the wooden sword she kept by her bedside table. That made her insides and her outsides feel brave. She sank slowly back down into her duvet, pulled it up to her nose and tried to think happy thoughts. Oh, twinkly, said the voice, making PJ sit up again. Very slowly, still keeping her eyes on the room, she pressed the switch on her bedside lamp. Nothing looked different. Her clothes from that day were still on the floor where she'd left them, along with a few toys, some books and a half-eaten bag of ready salty crisps that she was saving for emergencies. Very special things, said the voice suddenly, and from the foot of her bed up popped a large brown hair. He was wearing PJ's crown slightly over one eye. What's this? he asked, pointing to it. PJ gave herself a sharp pinch to check she wasn't dreaming. Ow, she said. I shall call it an owl then. He leant over and poked the wooden sword in her hand. Oh, pointy, he said, before hopping across the room to the wardrobe where he began to rummage about. PJ watched him. He was a particularly large hair, almost up to her shoulders, with very long ears, and his soft brown silky fur seemed to shimmer. Um, it's actually a crown, she said. It was still balanced precariously on his head. I shall call it an owl, said the hare stubbornly. Are you the moon hare, asked PJ, hoping that he was. Oh, that's a silly question, answered the moon hare. Of course I am. He was now wearing a pair of green stripy tights that he'd found in the wardrobe. How did you end up in my bedroom? Oh, I'm not sure, really, replied the moon hare, stretching out the elastic on the stripy tights. I was sort of pulled here, I guess. That happens every so often. I feel a tugging on my ears and twang! He let go the elastic. You're really very lucky to have me. PJ took a quick look at the moon, and sure enough, it was very smooth and round, and there was no sign of the hair in it. I did it! You came from the moon! She laughed, clapping her hands. What's the moon like? It's very shiny, said the moon hare. It needs a lot of polishing, he added, struggling to pull a yellow jumper over his head. Quite a lot of work, really, the moon hare continued in a woolly voice, especially when it's a full moon and I have to clean the whole thing. He tugged at the jumper some more, taking hold of the sleeves and pulling hard. He lost his balance and disappeared into the wardrobe with a crash. 
Oh, that doesn't sound good, said PJ, looking at the moon again. No, I prefer the crescent moon, said the moon hare from inside the wardrobe. Then I only have to clean the bits that show. After much clanging and bending of coat hangers, he appeared from the wardrobe. Wearing the crown, the yellow jumper, the green stripy tights and a pair of red trainers. Very stylish, said the moon hare. Silly moon hare, replied PJ. I'm not called moon hare, actually, clever pants, he said casually. At the moment, I'm crampy flampluff. PJ let out a squeal of laughter. <laughs> That's a really silly name, she said rudely. The moon hare put his hands on his hips and gave her a look. It's not as silly as yours. Pajamas, he said just as rudely. PJ doesn't stand for pajamas, said PJ firmly. Pajamas, ploppy pants, petulant, said the moon hare just as firmly. That's not my name, said PJ. Yes, it is. Pajamas is your first name and ploppy pants is your middle name, said the moon hare, poking out his tongue. PJ poked hers out back at him. The moon hare hopped over to the half-eaten bag of ready salted crisps and began to munch on them. You have a floor job, he said, with his mouth full, pointing to the clothes that had been left on the floor and spitting bits of crisps all over the carpet. Ugh, he continued, scraping his tongue with a paw and pulling a face. I don't like crispy cardboard. And he spat the rest of the crisps back into the bag. Anyway, now I'm here, which is very lucky for you, what are we going to do? What do you mean? asked PJ, remembering never to touch the crisp packet again. Well, I want fun and games and jokes and tricks and lots of fantastic stuff, said the moon hare, hopping up and down on the spot. Well, it is supposed to be bedtime at the moment, said PJ, although she didn't feel very sleepy at all now. Oh, bedtime isn't for an adventurer like me, said the moon hare. I'm dressed and ready to do stuff. What should we play with? <gasps> oh, I know. What about that dragon, Sandra? Why don't we go and see him?